Finally, we got a debate that was not a complete train wreck. Now, that's not to say that there weren't issues. I did take issue with the moderation. I think that a lot of the questions were framed in a very right-wing way. But this was a good debate for me, primarily because I think that Bernie Sanders' performance was exceptional. In fact, I would argue that this is his best debate performance, and I think that that is objectively so because you can see the reaction already reverberating around the country. So the first thing that we're going to do before we talk about the debate is getting to some general takeaways. The first is talk time. Now, part of the reason why I think Bernie Sanders had such a strong impression tonight was because finally he got the most speaking time with 20 minutes and 30 seconds. And, you know, he really only overtook Amy Klobuchar Towards the end, who clocked in 19 minutes and 53 seconds, which I think is absolutely absurd, seeing that she is polling around, uh, I want to say 3.3% nationally, so it's absolutely unfair, but for whatever reason, moderators seem to love her at each of these debates, and they call on her disproportionately in comparison, you know, with the other candidates who are polling better than her. You have Elizabeth Warren clocking in 19 minutes and 36 seconds, Pete Buttigieg with 19 minutes and 33 seconds, Joe Biden with 15 minutes and 28 seconds, and then Tom Steyer with 11 minutes, 50 seconds, Andrew Yang with 10 minutes, 56 seconds. Now, overall, the candidates had more time to speak, I believe, than the last debate on average, but that's because there are less participants. Now, I think that if I'm an Andrew Yang supporter, I'm going to be angered by the fact that Andrew Yang got the least amount of time once again. He got more time to speak overall this time, but he's called on rarely, and Amy Klobuchar is given more time. Tom Steyer is seemingly called on more than him, although, you know, their talk time was comparable. It's just, it's, it's clearly unfair. Now, while we're on the subject of moderation, I do want to take the time to note the right-wing framing of questions for them. So pretty much half the questions I want to say, and I'm probably being extra charitable, were framed in a very right-wing way. They asked about free college and used the talking point, well, should rich kids be able to go to college? I'm paraphrasing, of course. You know, when it comes to uh, the issue of the economy, they framed it in a very pro-Trump way. They brought up Obama's question about old men not being able to adequately represent people, and they used that to, you know, get Bernie Sanders, essentially. One of the moderators tried to get Bernie Sanders. He wanted to, you know, add to the conversation about climate change when they had moved on to race. She tried to get him, wouldn't allow him to go back, but he answered that flawlessly. He brought up how climate change is a racial justice issue. And the political moderator, who I think was the worst by far, he basically tried to get Bernie Sanders to commit to compromising. Take a look. Senator Sanders, you've spent plenty of time discussing and defending the merits of your Medicare for All plan, but the reality is that if Republicans retain control of the U.S. Senate, or even if Democrats win back a narrow Senate majority, your plan as constituted probably would not have the votes to pass Congress. So the question, Senator, is if Congress rejects your plan and the American people are looking to you for leadership on this issue, are there smaller, specific measures that you would take immediately to expand coverage and decrease costs as president? Now, on top of that, you know, on top of the right wing framing, uh, some of these questions were downright bizarre, and in fact, this question that I'm about to show you was probably the weirdest question I've ever seen asked at a debate before. In the spirit of the season, I'd like to ask each one of you, is there someone else among these candidates that you would, I have, you have two options, one, a candidate from whom uh, you would ask forgiveness for something maybe that was said tonight or another time, <laughs> or, or, a candidate to whom you would like to give a gift. And I'm going to start with you, Mr. Yang. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know how to process that question. And when Andrew Yang was given that question, you can tell that he was caught off guard and he had to take a few seconds to think about it because... I mean, how do you answer that type of question? Andrew Yang was ignored for a large part of this debate, and then he gets that question after a while of not being called on. I mean, it's just, it's awful. And the reason why I'm more excited about this debate isn't necessarily because I approve of the moderation. I think they were bad. 
And on top of that, I think the format was bad as well. You know, we had seven people in a three hour debate and we could have actually dived really deep into some of these issues like healthcare. Spent a half an hour on healthcare, a half an hour on foreign policy, really allow them to hash out the differences. And we just essentially saw the moderators try to throw in as many questions, as many topics as possible. And that does not really allow you to be nuanced. It doesn't allow you to dive into these intricate policy details. I mean, why haven't we expanded the conversation about healthcare? You know, it's always about, you know, the centrists versus Medicare for all. Elizabeth Warren bungled that portion, by the way. But why are we not asking Andrew Yang, who just released a healthcare proposal that is to the right of Biden and Buttigieg's plans. He doesn't even support a public option. So why aren't we bringing him into this conversation? Bring everyone in. It's just, it's incredibly irritating. However, I like this debate because the performance here was great. I got everything I wanted. Now, before we get into my rankings, before we get into some clips that I want to play for you, I want to show you the reaction from one focus group that was conducted by the LA Times. This is who they believe won this debate. How many thoughts? Tom Steyer won the debate. None of you. How many thought Andrew Yang won the debate? We have three people here. How many of you thought Mayor Pete won the debate? None of you. How many of you thought Elizabeth Warren won the debate? Two, four, six, eight, nine. And how many of you thought Bernie Sanders won the debate? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Now this is significant because only six of you walked in here supporting Sanders. Those people who are not voting for Sanders but you thought he won the debate, explain to me why. Yes? I thought his personality came through quite a lot and for me that immediate reaction, I always imagine somebody going up against Trump and that to me sparks like why he won tonight going against his people. Tell me why. Because I think he had, he had passion with his, with his answers. He's for the people, and he, has, he comes through. Well, I thought I liked Amy and, Bi and Biden. And who do you like? Um, definitely Bernie Sanders. He won you over also. Mm -hmm. Tell me why. He's on fire. He wants to be <laughs> so bad. Did you say fire? Yeah, he's on fire. <laughs> it, <laughs> explain that. I mean, it, he's just he's just feverishly hungry to to change the world, the America. So they agree. On top of that, you have individuals in media such as David Axelrod admitting Bernie Sanders kind of had a pretty good performance. I think we, we never talk about Bernie Sanders. He is actually doing pretty well in this polling. He's actually picked up. And the fact is, Bernie Sanders is as consistent exactly. as consistent can be. You know what he's going to say. I always say it's like a, a Billy Joel concert. You know, you hear the hits from the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. But, Everybody knows the words but, and they sing along, but they love it and they come but, and he's got a very devoted following. Now, a large part as to why I think Bernie had a fantastic performance, again, is because he demonstrated strength. He was aggressive. And really, you know, he had this burn it all down approach that I think will work for him. Now, Bernie Sanders... You can tell that he doesn't feel comfortable being overly aggressive because he's just a genuinely nice person, but you have to demonstrate strength because people want to see that you are capable of taking in Donald Trump. Even someone in that focus group that I just played for you, they said it seemed like, you know, this can be someone who goes up against Trump. I'm paraphrasing, but it's really important that Bernie Sanders is strong and not only call out your opponents, but call out moderation. And he did just that. He called out Tim Alberta for a question about climate change that was not good. Tim, in all due respect, your question misses the mark. It is not an issue of relocating people in towns. The issue now is whether we save the planet for our children and our grandchildren. That's great. Don't be afraid to reject the premise of the question if it's asked to you in a biased way or framed inappropriately. This is what makes you seem like a leader because that's what Donald Trump would do and people who are watching are asking themselves whether or not one of these candidates has the correct temperament to face off against Donald Trump in a debate stage um, and Bernie Sanders was great now while we're still on the subject of moderation moving on to a different subject there was a really weird and kind of funny moment where Judy was calling on Andrew Yang but looking at Tom Steyer and it led to <laughs> Andrew Yang basically being confused and then ultimately clapping at Judy and then being ignored. Mr. Yang, what more? I'm over here 
Mr. Yang, what more I'm can you say Judy. to the American people? Judy, I'm sorry, sorry Mr. Steyer. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. But I, before we kind of move on to the, you know, the rankings, who I think won and lost, even though I kind of spoiled my winner, um, I want to get to some highlights. I think that one of the main highlights was this moment from Elizabeth Warren where she was absolutely charming. Senator Warren, you would be the oldest president ever inaugurated. I'd like you to weigh in as well. Uh, I'd also be the youngest woman ever inaugurated. <laughs> On top of that, there was a moment from Bernie Sanders, and he's replicated this before, he's said this before, but he called out Joe Biden voting for the Iraq war, and every time he does this, I commend him for it. Joe, you're also the guy who helped lead us into the disastrous war in Iraq. And while we're talking about highlights, I think it would be appropriate to include lowlights, such as this really weird moment where um, Joe Biden was describing what a kid who couldn't talk properly said to him. Little kid who says, I, 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 I can't, I, I can't talk. Okay, we get the point. That was a little bit weird. But moving on to my rankings. So usually I have four categories. The good, the meh, kind of in the middle, and then we have the losers and the winners. I'm going to consolidate two categories. The middle one, since we are, you know, we're seeing less people perform at these debates each time. And I will now have three categories, the losers, the okays to goods, and the winners. Now we're going to work backwards and get to the winner. So when it comes to my losers, I have, uh, let's see, three people ultimately who I believe are losers. Tom Steyer, Pete Buttigieg, and Amy Klobuchar. Now, when it comes to Tom Steyer, you can tell that he is overly rehearsed. He is out of his element. He doesn't understand that the things that he says don't help his case. So, for example, he boasted about being in favor of a wealth tax for a year now. Not really something to brag about. You know, if you said, I've been in favor of the wealth tax for 10 years, then, you know, you get a little bit of credit. But that tells us that you took that position for purposes of political expediency. On top of that, he doesn't really say anything specific. When they were talking about corruption, he shifted that conversation to Donald Trump randomly when, no, we were having a really substantive conversation. We don't need you to tell us that Orange Man is bad. We know that. Let's debate the issue so we see who's the best candidate. All around, I absolutely cannot stand Tom Steyer. One, because he's a billionaire who bought his way onto that debate stage, but two, because I think objectively speaking, he is not showing any qualities that demonstrate that he's a leader and is capable of beating Donald Trump. His only asset that he believes will help him win is that he's also a, a you know a businessman. He has created jobs and you know if we want to compete with Donald Trump who's a businessman who thinks that the country should be ran like a business, then you should, you know, support me, a billionaire. Except in 2012 Democrats were trying to argue against that notion that a businessman should run the country, against Mitt Romney, that, you know, the country should be run like a business. It shouldn't. It's not a business. So I don't know what you're getting at, but whatever you're trying to put down, nobody's picking up and we don't like you. Take a hint. In fact, there are ads in New Hampshire that he's running so much that there was a political article or no, excuse me, it was from The Hill from, I want to say, two weeks ago where it detailed how people are literally getting irritated by Tom Steyer because his ads are playing so much that they've become memes in the state of New Hampshire. People have them memorized. So he's an absolute loser. He was hanging on for dear life to qualify for that next debate. He did nothing to help his chances. Now, when it comes to uh, Pete Buttigieg, he really is a phenomenal talker. He knows how to speak very well and be articulate, but he says nothing. He moves his mouth. There's a lot of noise that comes out of his mouth, but he never says anything meaningful. He dodges questions easily. He's able to kind of finesse his way out of corners. So, for example, he was asked the question about reparations. He said he'd support H.R. 40, which is a great step in the right direction. But when I saw the video title that PBS had posted, it said, Buttigieg commits to supporting reparations. Actually, no, he didn't really commit to that. If you listen to his answer carefully, he's not giving you a direct answer. He's not giving you direct answers to a lot of these questions. Not to mention, I believe he was a loser because this was the beat-up Buddha Judge night, and I thought that that would be the case 
Last time at that last debate, when going into that, he was basically the front runner. But now is the time when everyone chose to beat up Buttigieg. We had Bernie Sanders, Amy Klobuchar, Elizabeth Warren all call him out, take shots at him. And I believe even Andrew Yang threw in a shot once. I'm not sure. I believe so. So it was it was a great sight to see. He deserves this scrutiny. And I think he lost. Now, when it comes to Amy Klobuchar, she has benefited from the moderators giving her a boost at each and every single debate. And yet, that has not translated into a boost in the polls at all. And I think it's because she doesn't know how to read a room properly. She is basically an old school politician. She's like the Lisa Simpson of the Democratic Party. And I don't mean that as a compliment, where everything she says is overly rehearsed. She likes to, you know, talk about platitudes, diversity, uh, or no, not diversity. She said uh, decency, values, and patriotism. That's what she brought up. Um, on top of that, she kept interrupting people. And it's not like she was interrupting to make a good point, because I think that strategically you can benefit if you kind of elbow your way into these discussions. If you are not being heard and you're being ignored, I would recommend Andrea Yang do that. But she would interrupt and then she starts talking, and it's clear that she inter interjected for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Why did you need to say what you needed to say? Like, somebody is talking and, and making a point, and she'll just randomly chime in and say, can I respond to that? No, you're polling at 3.3%. And she's a little bit smug as well, because anytime she finishes a sentence, you just see this confidence in her face. Like, she fucking just crushed it, and that's not the case. You're not saying anything meaningful. You're not convincing anyone, okay? And she uses the same platitudes every single time. She did not have a good performance, and if I had to make a prediction, which I don't usually like to do, I would say that the moderators propping her up once again is not going to help her. She thinks that she's the strongest to beat Donald Trump, but she's not. We just ran a moderate in 2016, and that moderate lost to Donald Trump. So for you to make that case, um, you don't have a strong argument. I'm sorry. Stop interrupting. You're already getting called on disproportionately when you're not polling as well as people like Andrew Yang. Stop. Like, it, she's getting under my skin, but n not even, like, remotely close to as irritated I am with Pete Buttigieg. He is ultimately the most insufferable out of everyone. Now, for this next category, the okay to good. These people kind of just, they didn't do... <laughs> terrible, but they didn't necessarily help themselves. And for the first time, I'm putting Joe Biden in, you know, not the loser category. Or actually, you know what? That's not true. I did put him in the meh category before when I had that. I put him in this category. On top of that, I debated with myself, but ultimately I'm putting Elizabeth Warren in this category. And this one, I'm going to put this individual in two categories. Andrew Yang goes in this category. Now I'll start with him. Andrew Yang isn't in this category because I think he had a poor performance. He's in this category in terms of who did okay because I think that his performance was suppressed by the moderators. They essentially prevented him from spreading his wings, and I think that that's unfair. I don't support Andrew Yang. I think that the healthcare policy he released this week is absolutely embarrassing. It shows that he's not serious about real healthcare reform. It just kind of nibbles around the edges. However, I think that his performance at these debates is usually pretty solid. He has moved away from just being the UBI candidate. He's demonstrating knowledge on other policy areas. And he's a really smart, intelligent, personable guy. So he always performs well at these debates. But the reason why it's difficult for me to declare him a winner, even though I think you could argue that he is one of the winners, is because the moderators just largely ignored him. Um, so you can argue that he's in the winner category. In fact, I'm going to put him in that category too, um, because I think he performed well, but because the moderators kind of stopped him from excelling and spreading his wings, as I said, uh, he kind of goes in this middle category in terms of how this will help him. When it comes to Joe Biden, I mean, he had a better performance. I don't think that he lost. I think that this was probably one of his more solid performances. He seemed like he was able to collect his thoughts a little bit better. He was more articulate. He kind of also dunked on the Politico moderator at one point in time when he was uh, joking. Um, and he, he did a little bit better. With that being said, I did not like that he was condescending to Bernie Sanders. He was talking about healthcare, and his response was, put your hand down, Bernie. No, go fuck yourself. He's sitting here using health industry talking points about 
choice, right, public versus private insurance, when Wendell Potter, who's a former industry insider turned whistleblower, just this last week revealed to us that he helped craft that talking point. So Joe Biden isn't saying anything insightful. You're using the same health insurance industry talking points. So you don't need to be condescending to Bernie Sanders. I hated that. However, even though I hate that, putting my feelings aside, I think that that helped Joe Biden a little bit because whenever you're aggressive and you demonstrate strength, that communicates to voters that you are capable of taking on Donald Trump. Now, I think that Joe Biden would face plan in a debate against Donald Trump, but he needed to demonstrate strength, right? Um, and I think that kind of going after Bernie in that way, it kind of helped him demonstrate strength. Although when it comes to policies, he really didn't bring much. I think his answer on the economy overall and how to respond to Donald Trump's quote unquote good economy was adequate. Um, overall, it just wasn't a horrible performance. So he's in this okay category. When it comes to Elizabeth Warren, so for the first half of this debate, she seemed like she didn't want to be there. She wasn't necessarily giving answers that were up to par with what she usually gives at these debates. And on top of that, you know, I just felt like her heart really wasn't in it. And maybe this is because her standing in the polls have drastically decreased. She is now in third place. Bernie has surpassed her. Although I will say in that second half, we saw the old Elizabeth Warren that we were used to at these debates. And when she started to take on Mayor Pete for the Wine Cave fundraiser, that was an absolutely brilliant moment. She once again brought the charm as she usually does by saying she'd be the youngest woman ever inaugurated. I think overall she had a good performance. Not her best, but a good solid performance. Um, although even though she challenged Pete, I think he kind of he held his own. She did not completely dominate him in the way that I believe, you know, uh, Kamala dominated Biden or Tulsi dominated Kamala. So it was a great start, but she kind of uh, fell off. Now, moving on to the winner categories, as I stated, I think that Andrew Yang definitely is a winner. He's kind of in two categories here. Um, overall, I think I would lean towards putting him in the winner category because his performance was great. But by and large, I believe that the winner, objectively speaking, is Bernie Sanders. I shouldn't say objectively because you can't necessarily reach an, reach an objective truth about someone's performance. That's really difficult. But trying to like remove myself from my own pro-Bernie bias and just judge this based on performance as a casual observer, I do believe that Bernie Sanders had the best performance of the night. Now, that's not to say that his performance was perfect, but it was better than usual. When he called out Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden's billionaire donors, I think that was his strongest moment of the night when it came to healthcare, you know, defending Medicare for all, calling out the greed of the insurance industry. I think he absolutely crushed it. He made a promise of day one immigration reform and week one healthcare reform, things to get people excited about. I think that's incredibly important. When it comes to Israel-Palestine, once again, he reiterated that we can't just be pro-Israel, we have to be pro-Palestine as well. I think that when a moderator tried to back him into a corner and make it seem as if he didn't want to talk about race issues when he wanted to touch back on climate change, I think he did a great job at saving himself from that potential, you know, pitfall. However, there were a couple of areas where he needed to do better and come prepared because he should have expected these questions. The first was when they asked Bernie Sanders about Obama's statement about old men basically needing to get out of the way. Bernie should have anticipated that this question would be asked because they always ask a question that will hurt Bernie Sanders based on something that someone said recently, usually a Democratic Party insider. So his answer on this wasn't great. I think that Elizabeth Warren and Pete, uh, not Pete but a judge, Joe Biden had better responses to that question. Uh, Elizabeth Warren in particular had the best response because, I mean, she had that moment that basically was a showstopper for a lot of people. But his biggest weakness of the night by far was his response to the trans issue and violence against trans women. I think that Bernie Sanders has the best platform when it comes to LGBTQ issues, but he doesn't know how to properly communicate why his platform is so robust and so good. Um, and he needs people in his ear to help him with this because Bernie Sanders is sympathetic towards the cause of trans people, but he needs to be able to communicate their issues and demonstrate understanding. And I think that he didn't do this adequately. So when they asked him what to do to stop violence against trans women, 
He basically said something to the effect of, we need moral leadership. But what you have to do, Bernie, is you have to communicate that you know about the root causes that ultimately lead to violence against trans women. So what I would have said if I were in that position is, look, we need to decriminalize sex work. Let's legalize sex work as a matter of fact, because a lot of times trans women are impoverished and they are pushed into this field. And if we bring this industry to light, then we can protect trans women, right? This would be something that would be a lifesaver. Um, on top of that, if he talked about um, economic issues that disproportionately impact the LGBTQ community, namely trans women, trans women of color, talked about poverty and homelessness, which makes trans women susceptible to violence, this would have been something that helped him. Now, he brought up healthcare and how that helps trans women, but he didn't mention that Medicare for All would cover gender affirming surgeries. This is one of the main selling points to me for Medicare for All, because I have trans friends who have to resort to GoFundMe for gender affir affirming surgeries. This would literally change the lives of every single trans person in America. Brag about that, Bernie. Like, you have a phenomenal policy. Nobody else has that. Nobody else is proposing Medicare for All, aside from Elizabeth Warren's promise to pursue it in year three. Okay. Not going to happen. So Bernie Sanders, he really, he has the policy proposals that he needs. He just needs to do a better job at boasting about it in this area. But the great thing about Bernie Sanders is he tends to listen to constructive criticism. So I hope that somebody will see this video and have Bernie, you know, get in contact with one of his trans supporters. There are many people who are trans who support Bernie Sanders. I know them. So he needs to do a better job in that area. So... It wasn't a perfect performance, but overall, even those weaknesses aside, still the best performance from him. And I say this because he went above and beyond his usual performance. And you can see the effect that he had based on the response on the internet and in mainstream media. When you do such a good job at a debate that even the mainstream media pundits have to give you credit, you know you crushed it. And Bernie absolutely crushed it. So this is a great debate. If you are a Bernie supporter, because we were already, you know, starting to surge and this only adds to that momentum or will hopefully add to his momentum as we get closer and closer to Iowa. So this is look, when this debate ended, I was absolutely ecstatic because I knew Bernie Sanders did what he needed to do. Again, there were a couple of areas where there's opportunity for improvement, but by and large, this performance is a performance that he needed to have, especially at this time when people are already starting to realize he could pull this off. So great performance overall, much better, you know, um, debate. No thanks to moderation, largely due to Bernie Sanders having a pretty solid night. And as a Bernie Sanders supporter, that feels really great to see. So I will leave that there. I'll have additional video segments where I talk about individual uh, video clips more in depth. Look out for those.